Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial for Tutor LMS. Today we are going to go over the quiz builder for Tutor LMS. As we all know that the quiz builder got a massive facelift with the all new Tutor LMS 3.0. So with that, let's get started. In this video, we'll go over how to create all the different types of questions for quizzes available on Tutor LMS. So firstly, to create a quiz, we need to have a topic. Now you can see that we've already created a topic here. So to get into the quiz builder we need to click on quiz and here we are at the quiz builder so first of all you can notice that the quiz builders pop-up is much bigger and much more intuitive to use so first of all we'll go ahead and add our quiz title here so we'll call this quiz test your quizzing so once we've added the title for our quiz we can now start adding questions and you can see that there are eight different question types available. So let's get started. First of all, we have the true or false question type. So pretty easy to understand. We first need to set a statement as a question and then we'll select the correct answer, be it true or false. So let's set our question. We'll say the sky is blue. And for this, the co correct answer would be true. If it was false, we just need to select it here but it's true, so we'll go ahead and click on this. Now, there are some conditions beside each question. Generally, these are the conditions that you can set. So you can enable answer required, which means that students must provide an answer to move on to the next question. So we'll go ahead and toggle the answer required, and then we can move on to the next question. Quick tip before we move on to the next question, you can also duplicate any question type that you create in the quiz builder. Anyways, moving on, next up, we have the multiple choice question type. For multiple choice, we'll need to set a question just like before. So our question is, which of these are animals? And now we have to add options for our answers. So you need to add the options one by one. So this would be option A, then you can set option B, and we'll add all our options accordingly. So now you need to select which of these options would be the correct answer. So in this case, the question is which of these are animals? So obviously the options would be A and B. So see that the question is not letting us choose two options because for this we need to enable this condition where we have to tell the quiz builder that we have multiple correct answers. So if we enable this, now we can select both of these as the right answer. And we'll go ahead and enable answer required and we'll randomize the choices for the options. Okay, so moving on, we'll go to the open-ended or essay type question. So for these type of questions, usually because it's an open-ended question, the answer would be dependent on the student answering the question. So while you can have some pointers to indicate what determines the correct answer, you cannot have one set answer. So for open-ended essay type questions, when a student answers them, the instructor has to manually check and review that answer for the student to get the marks for this question. So we'll add our question here. Describe your favorite color in one sentence. And that's it. That's all we have to do here because the answer is completely dependent on the student. We'll select answer required and we can move on to the next question. So next up we have fill in the blanks. Pretty simple, but the setup might be a little confusing, so let's walk through it right now. So our question can be, please complete this saying. And the saying would be, roses are dash, violets are blue. So we want to put the dash after R. So how do we do that? You can see that there's a tooltip explaining the process here. Basically, what we have to do is, if we want to add a dash, we have to use a second bracket parenthesis and type in dash. This would let Tutor LMS know that there is a word that goes here and this would appear as the fill in the blank. If you have multiple dashes, then you can also get rid of this, give the parentheses and type in dash again. Now, how do we indicate what the correct answers are? So since we have two dashes here, our first dash or the first word would be red. So you'll see that Tutor LMS is actually giving you a warning and it says match the number of answers to the number of blanks or dashes you have in your question. So because we have two dashes, we'll need to give two answers before we can finish setting up the quiz. So how do we indicate two dashes? We'll write the first word, add. We will add a vertical separator or a vertical bar and we'll write the second answer. And now we're done with the question. So we'll give answer required, okay, and this will be 
what students will see. Next, we come to the short answer question type. So this is the same as the open-ended or essay type question, but this would be used for a bit shorter answers. And you can set the character limit for each of these questions, which will check out later in the settings tab. So you could also use this for like a one word answer too. So what color is a banana? And the students can place their answers. And we're actually not gonna set answer required for this question so that we can see how it looks when we're actually attempting the quiz. Anyways, moving on to the next question type, which is the matching question type. So how this question type works is you add a question and a matched option and the options are going to be jumbled up and students have to select the matching correct answer for the question. So we'll set our question to match the colors to the objects and when we go to select an option now we'll have a question and a matched option we have banana and the matched option for this would be yellow and in the same way we'll add a few more options now we have all our options and we can also jumble them up manually if we want and we'll set answer required and additionally we have a unique condition for this type of question so we can actually do something called image matching where we can have an image students would need to match the answers to the corresponding images but we're not going to do that so we'll disable image matching and we'll have our options here. Moving on, we have the image answering question type. If you click on add option, you'll see that you can upload an image here and then students would need to identify something in that image. So let's say our question is, what is this called? And we'll upload an image of a rainbow. So the answer would be, this is a rainbow. Or we can just say rainbow. You see on this tooltip, it says that the answer is case sensitive so the answer would be this is a rainbow and we'll select okay but what if a student doesn't know that this answer is actually case sensitive and they need to type it exactly how we have determined the answer so you can actually let the students know the instructions for answering this question so we'll let them know that the answer is case sensitive and you can add more options if you want but we're only going to add the one now you see something else here called an answer explanation. So if your question is quite complicated and you want students to learn regardless of if they get the right answer or not, you can add an answer explanation which would indicate why the right answer is the right answer. Anyways, moving on, we have the final question type which is the ordering question type. So here you would have multiple options and students would need to order them in whatever order you determine in the question. So let's set our question to arrange these colors in alphabetic order. So we'll add our options and we'll set the answer to be required. And now we're done with setting up our quiz. So let's add the finishing touches by going through the settings. So on the settings tab, first of all, we can set the time limit. So this is a pretty short quiz. We'll set 10 minutes as the time limit. You can also enable this toggle to hide the quiz time. So students would not know how long the quiz is actually supposed to be. And then we have something called the feedback. So there are three types of feedback modes. We have the default, where answers will be shown to the students after they finish completing the entire quiz. You can have reveal mode where answers are shown after attempting any question. So even if they get it right or wrong, they'll see the answer right after they attempt the quiz. And then we have something called the retry mode where you would let the students retake the quiz after they finish taking it the first time. You can then also select how many attempts or how many retries they get per quiz. And if you set this to zero, that means that they have unlimited attempts for the quiz. You can then set a minimum passing grade. And then we come to something called max questions allowed to answer. So let's say you've created 20 questions for your quiz. And if you set this number to 10, then what TutorLMS will do is is it will give students 10 questions out of the 20 in the question bank. You can ensure that the question would either be in a random order or in the order that you've created them or in a descending order from how you've created them, however you want. But let's say you have eight questions in the bank and you've set the number to 10. So then this would actually show or give the students all the questions in the quiz because the max number is higher than the total number of quizzes. Then we come to the advanced settings. So you can enable this toggle to make sure that the quiz starts automatically. So it will start right when the quiz page 
finishes loading. You can also edit the question layout and lastly the question order where you can select how you want the question to be displayed. So from your quiz question bank, how you would want the question to appear. You can also hide the question number and lastly you can set the character limit for short answers and open-ended essay answers. Go ahead, hit save. So now let's see what it looks like on the front end as a learner answering this quiz. So we'll need to publish this course and now we can take the quiz. So here we are at our quiz that we just created. So you'll see that before we start the quiz, it shows us how many minutes we have to answer our quiz, if we have taken any previous attempts at this quiz or what the passing grade for the quiz is. So let's go ahead and start our quiz. So since we selected random order, this is actually the first question that's coming up, but this is not the first question that we created, right? So let's go ahead and match the prompts to the question, and then we can go to the next question. So the next question says, what is this called? And we are reminded that the answer is case sensitive. Go to the next question. And let's say we don't we don't wanna answer this question. We we want to go to the next question, but see, it's not going to let us do that because we enabled answer required for this question type. Now that we've selected them and we can see that those are the correct answers, right? So the sky is blue, true. Let's, let's actually select false. Let's see what happens if we do that. And you see that Tutor Elements shows us the, that the correct answer was actually blue. Next up, we're asked to arrange these colors in the alphabetic order go to the next question. So now we have a fill in the blanks question. So please complete the saying, roses are red and violets are blue. Submit and go next. So this is our short answer type question. So something interesting, because we did not enable answer required for this question type, we actually have an option to skip this question entirely if we want. And lastly, we have the long or open-ended essay type question. So it says, describe your favorite color in one sentence. We'll just write a dummy response. And you can see that it shows us how many characters remaining for this answer. So we're at the last question. That's why it says submit quiz. So we'll go ahead and submit the quiz. So once we're done with the quiz, we can see that there is a review. There's a report of how we did in this quiz. So we can see we had total eight questions with eight marks and we got four right and one incorrect. But there's some questions missing and the result is pending because some of the questions require an instructor to manually review the answers and mark them as correct or incorrect. And if we click on details, we can see which questions we got wrong and which we got right. This question is the open-ended type question, which is pending because the instructor has to go through it. And same for the image answering. And as for the true and false, we intentionally got it wrong. So it's showing us incorrect. And the short answer type question, the instructor also has to review. So how would the instructor review these questions? So the instructor will have to come to Tutor LMS and then go to quiz attempts and click on review to review the answers. Once they come to this screen, what the students gave as answers for each of the questions, and then you need to select whether it's right or wrong. What is this called? So we'll set this to correct as well. Clearly this is not correct. So we'll make sure that this is set to incorrect and then we'll set this to correct. And once you're done, go ahead and click update and now the quiz will be updated for the student. So now if the student reloads that review page, they'll see that they earned enough marks to pass the qu quiz and the result says pass. It no longer says pending because the instructor has reviewed the answers and completed the quiz for them. And well, that's it folks. We hope that this video on the all new quiz builder of Tutor LMS was helpful to you all. If you face any problems, be sure to let us know in the comments below. And as always, have a good one, everyone.